driving all this are our customers and enterprise customers and these vertical markets. We have great hope for them with, with 5G. Um, and I'm pleased to say in our audience we have representatives from a, a couple of, of verticals here. And I'd like to invite them one at a time onto our podium to, to ask a question of our guests. Um, first, if I can invite um, John Flack from Hilton to, to, to come up. Please, this is John Flack from Hilton. John, you have a question for our service providers or panel? I, I do, I do. Thank you. Very insightful. Uh, my first question is, I mean, this is a wonderful hotel, but can we have this at a Hilton next year? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, Carolina, it resonated with me when you said that you are a guest and you're a valued guest and you like the frictionless environment, uh, you know, getting connected automatically and so forth. We've been in the Wi-Fi business as a hot, and I'm kind of speaking really on behalf of hospitality. We've been in the Wi-Fi business since the early 2000s. In fact, we partnered with Intel on a very, one of the very first Wi-Fi uh, experiences in the lobby of the Hilton New York back in the early 2000s and Intel with your Citrino chip set and so forth but so we've been in the business for a long time we've invested an incredibly amount of a lot of money and our owners have invested an incredible amount of money into Wi-Fi uh, we had a period where we had revenue that we were gaining off of Wi-Fi that's essentially dried up it was essentially we're giving away Wi-Fi mostly to fr uh, free to all of our customers now as they expect so my question is, what is going to be the impact of 5G on Wi-Fi in general? And I have some owners that are even asking the questions or making statements like they made with 3G, 4G, and LTE that this is going to make Wi-Fi go away. I'd like your response on that. Good question. Who would like to, to, to stop it? Arno? You, you. Um, first, Wi-Fi, it's uh, mandatory. We have, uh, of course, we're investing a lot in fiber, so you can imagine for our fiber customers, both consumer or business, we really need to have Wi-Fi to terminate that. And it's the same on the 5G uh, network, we we'll use fiber, fiber for backhauling. So at the end, what is useful is to have this ambient connectivity, uh, indoor, outdoor, and we need a mix of technologies to achieve that. So what you need to do, uh, perhaps, is to upgrade your Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi 6, and I can give you uh, some contact for that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I think you wanted to respond as well. Yeah, but certainly the technologies can coexist. I'll give you an example, our 5G home product. Um, that's the 5G link to the house, then it's distributed through the house via Wi-Fi, because all the devices are enabled. So I think it's always going to be there as a part of it, and it's going to evolve in a complementary fashion. Thank you, Mike. Um, Robert. Um, it's a good, very good question. I think the way we look at it and the way customers look at it is there are inherent benefits, technology benefits that sit on cellular that are superior to Wi-Fi, right? It's better under load, so less jitter. It's got better propagation characteristics. You can put more on, you know, more users on access points. And the cool thing about our network now is it's software-based. Now, over a cellular umbrella covering your facilities, your hotels, you can take that data set and drop it into your data center and do what you want with it. That gives you ultimate privacy and the control to do really cool things, like Carolyn said, around your guest experience, right? To take that to another level where you feel really a part of an experience that you can't get anywhere else. And it's the cellular technology over Wi-Fi that some say, you know, make it the Wi-Fi killer. We'll see where that is, where that goes, but I think there's definitely more worth looking into this, you know, topic. Thank you. Oh, oh, come on. We have, so, we have, we have, I, a, we have a bonus answer. I invited John to come, and, uh, but I, I do want to say that recently, a couple of weeks ago, I went on to an IT summit of a CIO summit by <clears throat> Western Hotel, and I brought forward a prototype that we designed. It's what we call a network in a box. It's about this big. We literally took it through TSA because we told them it's a computer. It looks like a computer. It really functions like a computer. In it, we put in a reference stack of 5G, LTE, and Wi-Fi, plus part of a UPF that's going down, so the control is in the cloud, but the data plane is on there. And it puts in a Movidia, so it has computer vision, has an AI capability inference, and as well as a Mac. 
So instantly, it becomes a network in a bus, a private network that can be managed by either of these gentlemen and serve exclusively for your hotel. So I think something like that as a prototype could be something we explore. Thank you very much, Caroline. <laughs> Justin, you got any, we'd like to add, since yeah. you know, we've all well, contributed. Given we have a large uh, Wi-Fi business in Aruba, you know, I'm, of course I'm a believer in Wi-Fi, and I think it's complementary. And I think if you look at what, if you think about the services that you deploy, go back 15 years ago when you started deploying Wi-Fi, what were people using it for? Many of those services have actually shifted to your phone. Email, you know, web browsing, et cetera. What are people doing on Wi-Fi in your hotels now? Well, they're streaming media and content. Caroline was talking about gaming. I mean, there may be new experiences you can bring to your customers around a, a more, you know, a, a entertainment experiences that are more immersive than just the television. And that's where I think you're going to see things like Wi-Fi continue to evolve. I think they'll be complementary. There's different challenges with ubiquity and experience that you have to balance. But I expect you're going to see both, uh, both succeed. And, and in many ways, if you look at the history, one has kind of created value for the other. So I expect that'll continue. Thanks, Justin. Jo John, hopefully we've given you some good answers. Uh, our guests have given you some good answers. I'm sure they'll be, uh, they'll be around after the panel to, to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one if you want any further information. But hopefully we've, we've helped out there. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. We also have a representative from the broadcast and media industry, Mike, Mike, Mike Crimp, please, CEO of IBC, the International Broadcast Corporation. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, um, thanks for the opportunity to, to ask the question. Uh, it's only just recently the, the media and entertainment sector uh, cropped up there. Um, clearly, 5G is going to uh, enable lots of um, media services. Uh, I guess my question is in two part. What do you think the killer applications might be? And then specifically, um, is this going to uh, enable operators to compete with broadcasts or, or, or is it a collaboration? How do you see that unfolding? Great. Robert. That's, a, that's a great question. So um, our two companies last year um, went out to, a, um, to an event, the US uh, Open Golf Tournament in Shinnecock Hills, New York with a Intel-based camera to go put 5G millimeter wave at a venue for broadcast. They took a camera on the tee box on the green and took a live feed into the production truck and broadcast it back to the network. What was cool about that for um, the broadcaster was that opens up new verticals and content that they can't get to today. They can't drive a truck, that those giant trucks that they park out to every venue that they have assets or rights to. And so think about 5G as a service, a mobilized high throughput capability that you can stand up and turn down, shoot it and move on. So I think the broadcast space is uh, looking forward to new revenue generation streams. Thank you, Rose. Thanks, yep. Jeff. Yep. Um, a lot of latency <laughs> in here. Have you noticed A lot that? of latency. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you think of the wireless industry, I've been around for 28 years, right? The biggest limitation to wireless was that link from the cell site to the mobile, right? You always had design for it. It was always the trickiest, didn't have the most capacity. When you look at 5G, millimeter wave, all of a sudden, because we're using the density of 4G, and you're talking about gigabit bandwidth, all of a sudden the whole dynamic of the whole industry changes to the point where you can do things to mobile that you could never do wirelessly and mobily. So I think what we're gonna see in this fourth industrial revolution is a complete flip on the side of the head of what was true before, um, or what was not possible before is now possible. So I think you're gonna see that, and especially that industry, it's gonna totally change the dynamic. Game changer, okay? Thanks, Mike. Oh, no. um, perhaps uh, I should invite you to, to France, to Paris, because we have a complete 5G lab with 4G, 5G, so that you can play, because you know your business. So we already have uh, many, many major companies that uh, have joined us, so you are very, very welcome in Orange Gardens, where we have our main 5G lab. Welcome. Sure, will take him up later. Uh, come on. I want, I want to jump in a bit. Uh, in addition to everything they said, uh, I was part of that U.S. Open. It was phenomenal. One thing that what we have done with this uh, uh, National Hockey League, actually Dave done this, 
I actually saw this at the All-Star game. Me not being a hockey fan, I barely could see the puck because they're now tracking it. They actually overlay the video on the data. It's the other way around. So NBC actually broadcast this. You could see the, the puck going. You could see the, all the stats coming along. And the storytelling it become much more phenomenal. If you think about, I grew up in China. People do not play hockey. But if you broadcast this in, on TV, now you're telling a story. It's not just about a game. You have a story of the player. You have a story of the game. You all of a sudden makes it much more transparent to the English experience is so much better. I really think it's a game changer. Right. That's Carly. Kind of like I don't know about you, mate, but I, I like the emphasis on the storytelling and the enhanced storytelling aspect, which I've not yeah, heard I, before. I think that's that's. that's no, great. no, I, I, absolutely. It was, um, it, it was, it was, it was a, a, a couple of words that were going through my head at the time. I thought, well, if you if you ask me to sum up, I'd say like our business is a collaborative and creative business, and it's all about telling stories. So when we see technologies like this, we get really, really excited. So I'm, I look forward to speaking to you all later. But thank you for the opportunity. Great, Mike. Thanks very much thank indeed. You, thank you, Mike Quinn. Um, we did start late, um, so we should run a little bit late, um, and we should ask anybody in the audience who also wants to ask a question of our panel, if there's anyone from the audience who, who would like to ask anything of our, of our panel on this subject matter, please, please, please raise your hand, because now is an opportunity. The opportunity is going to last five seconds, counting down, four, three, two, one. No takers. Oh. Don't we worry, don't one. worry, don't worry. We got one. Oh, we got one. We got one. Wait, wait, wait. Where? Four, fifth one. Oh, you're right. Oh, right in the light. I couldn't see you in the light. Pop up to the podium. Pop up to the podium where we can hear you. Well, hello, everybody. I'm French. Nobody's perfect. My name is Serge Conessa. I'm the CEO and the founder of Immersion4. I have a question because I haven't heard it here, which is how about the energy consumption and the radio pollution of 5G within smart cities according to the fact that today, 50% of the population are living in cities, and it is anticipated, according to the McKinsey report, that two-thirds of the planet is going to be living in, by 2050 in cities. OK. Uh, and, and we want to tackle the uh, smart cities, yeah, yeah. quality of life? Yeah, I'll take Please. a shot at it. Um, you know, because we, we've been talking about this a lot um, in the US, um, about the ability to use the network. I mean, you, you talked about smart cities, you talked about traffic flow, you talked about how to route traffic, you talked about even just, you know, being able to manage how people are walking along the streets, motorcycles are moving around, how to use autonomous vehicles to integrate that with the camera systems, right, in a mech type fashion, so that, you know, not only is it flow better, um, but it's also safer than it's ever been before. So when I think of 5G, and the latency that it's going to bring to the table, which, you know, under 10 milliseconds, it's going to enable these types of innovations in cities to allow them to function smoother. And that includes the lighting, you know, in terms of when it's used and, and it's utilized the best as it possibly can. So that's part of the whole smart city application that we've been pushing hard um, within the U.S. Great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Arno, do you want to respond? Um, yes, I take one of your points. A real... Um, uh, subject because, uh, of course, the data usage is growing very fast, more than 60% every year for us. So uh, we really want on each generation to have better energy efficiency. So, of course, inside 5G today, 5G standard, we have some enhancement like advanced sleep mode, like uh, the fact that we move from passive antenna where you have this energy everywhere to active antenna where you just put uh, that where at the places where the usage is. So um, we still need improvement. Our industry still needs improvement. I think it's a, a, a serious subject, so we, we need to continue to work together on that uh, as a, an industry, as a sector. But there are not so many sectors that have this kind of um, boom in terms of usage. So we need to address that as a society and really to have the right standard evolution because 5G will evolve. Great. Anna, thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Thanks very much. Thanks for your question. We, we've got to start wrapping things up. But before we wrap things up, I, I, 
I want to get the audience involved um, with a quick, very unscientific poll. We've been talking about use cases for 5G. I think we've got a little graphic we can, we can pop on the screen. Um, we've been asking ourselves what the use cases might be. But look, here's, here's an example of a few industries here. Automotive, manufacturing, healthcare, media, smart cities, stroke, transportation. So, show of hands as to which of these markets we think has got the most potential or most to gain from 5G. Show of hands or a whoop or whatever, make any noise you want. Um, let me go through them one by one. Who thinks it's automotive? Oh, a couple of hands, low volume. All right. <laughs> manufacturing. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty strong showing for manufacturing. What about healthcare? It's <laughs> close, but I don't think it caught manufacturing. Media and entertainment. Yes. Oh. Disproportionately large voice from somewhere, I think, <laughs> skewing the results. <laughs> and finally, what about smart cities and transportation? Oh, it's always good to end on a downer. Well, you know, congratulations, but I'm a, it, 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 re it really does look like our audience thinks that, that manufacturing is the, is the first market, and it's probably not too hard to disagree with that. Because the payback is pretty... Uh, or obvious, kind of like easy to assert. Good is all about efficiency, so yeah. big driver. Perfect for 5G. Great. Um, thank you all in our audience for, 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 for joining us tonight. I'd like to thank all our guests. Caroline, thank you very much for joining us again. Um, Mike, thanks for joining us this first time. It's Appreciate pleasure. it. Pleasure. Arno, likewise. Thank you very much. Thanks. Robert, thanks again for thanks, Guy. participating. Thank you. And, and Justin, I know you've been in, in some uh, discomfort at the end here, but thank you so much for, for, you know, for making, making the you. time and, and joining us. That's much appreciated. Thank you.